we got a long agenda today. So, uh, all right, so the first item on the agenda is approval of the meeting minutes. And there's Mr. Slade right there. I would make a motion to amend the meeting minutes and decision letter for case number two. Uh, Mr. Slade Severe voted against the case. Okay. You, you ready to take over? You want me to keep going? Keep going, please. Okay. All right, so um, we've got one motion on the table to uh, I second that motion uh, amend with the, the amendment. Uh, we have a motion that's been made and properly seconded. Does everybody understand the motion? Okay. All those in favor of the amendment to the minutes to which case was that? Would you mind stating that case for the record? Uh, case number two. Okay, case number two. The Westmead Farms. Westmead Farms, okay. So is there uh, any opposition? If all those in favor of the motion say, say aye. 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 All those against, like so. Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. All right. Um, I've got a couple of changes as well, and I may need somebody else's help making this motion. But uh, one is, um, I've, I've just got a question for counsel. Um, in the decision letter to Sarah Hooper, Barge Cawthon and Gibson Creek Equalization Facility. This was the first case we had. Um, there's a reference in the decision letter that I think normally would show up in the minutes, but not necessarily a decision letter. I, I don't mind it being attributed to me. I don't. I don't mind that statement per se because that's I've, I've made that statement many, many times. I'm just wondering if if it's a appropriate or necessary to put that kind of information in a decision letter. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so it's certainly not necessary for it to be in the decision letter. Um, I'm not sure I see any real harm in it being in the decision letter, okay. but it certainly it should be in the minutes. Okay. Um, but um, so I, I think generally you're correct. Um, okay. uh, you know, the kind of the role of the decision letter is really more to kind of inform the um, recipient of the decision of the committee going forward and what they have to conform their conduct to. Um, uh, so it's not necessary for it to be in there. Um, so I, I would, I don't think, that, I, I don't really have a legal, strong legal opinion about it one way or the other, so I would defer to whatever the committee prefers. You, you approve the decision letters, so if you don't want that in there, you can certainly take it out. Uh, any of the committee members have any comment on that? I, I don't have an opinion either way. I do. I don't think it should be in there. Okay. I think the uh, the animatics recuse that needs to come out. Uh, you voted against. I'd like that to come out. In fact, who voted favor and for it and who voted against it in the paragraph above, I think, needs to come out too. I, I agree. <coughs> okay. Is that a motion, Mr. Chairman? Well, it needs to be done in both letters. Okay. Um, And going forward, um, we don't necessarily need to know who um, made the motion, who voted for or against. It's just after discussion, there was a vote, and here's the decision. That, that's my impression: is that decision letters record decisions, and minutes record yes. debate and decision. Yeah. So. I guess I make the motion to amend both letters to remove uh, the names of the uh, committee members that voted for, that carried, that, that, that proposed the motion, and then also that voted for or against. And then also um, in the um, Gibson Creek equalization letter to remove uh, the two paragraphs before the now therefore, which are Mrs. Annex, Anna Maddox, et cetera, and then Mr. Dodd Galbraith voted, et cetera. 
take both of those paragraphs out. All right, we've got a motion with those, two, with those two changes. The, the motion is to approve the letters. I'll second. Okay. Uh, we got a motion made and properly seconded. Uh, I'd like to have a little bit of discussion on it because I had a change as well. So I'm going to ask for an amendment on, on the motion. Let me see if I can find it. Does your, your motion only address is the decision letters, right, Mr. Slade? Not the minutes. Well, I thought I just heard the minutes passed. No, we haven't. We haven't approved. Oh, that's right. We did approve the minutes, didn't we? Okay. No, we approved an amendment to the amendments. We didn't approve the entire minutes. Okay. So. Well, I think we got a motion on the floor for the letters first. For the letters first. Yes, yes. So let's knock that out. And then we can go back to the minutes if the minutes never were never approved. Okay, okay. So uh, I have a uh, an edit to a decision letter that is. Let me see if I can find it here. Okay, that was the first one. It is on Westmead. Uh, under page two, item five, uh, it says the appellant shall be required to work with staff on a vegetative plan for zone one buffer for a representative of a healthy repair, repairing buffer. I think that should say something to the extent of for the zone one buffer to create a healthy riparian buffer. Can you repeat that, please? Yeah. Um, the appellate shall be required to work with staff on a vegetative plan for the zone one buffer to create a healthy riparian buffer, R-I-P-A-R-I-A-N buffer. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Second most. Okay, so motion has been made and properly seconded. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, motion passes. Any abstentions? Okay. And that was to, that was to modify the motion. To yes, that was to modify my motion. Your motion. So my mo so that motion now is on the table with the changes that I cha that I suggested and that you suggested. Yes. So now the motion is to <laughs> approve these letters. Yes. Yes. So we ha we have amended we have amended the motion to uh, amend the letters, and uh, so does everybody understand that we are editing the decision letters based on the amendment that I offered and based upon the amendment Mr. Slate offered. Them? Does everybody understand that? Okay. Yeah. All right, so is there any discussion on this motion? No. no. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, so now we need to go back to the meeting minutes. All right, we had an amendment to the meeting minutes earlier, and I had an edit to the minutes as well. And so, and so do I. That slave had voted no on the second. Yes, yes. And so all we need to do now is make sure the meeting minutes reflect everything we just changed in the decision letters and are consistent with that, and then to approve the minutes. Does yeah, that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we just approved, just approved the letters. Yeah, we've already approved the letters, yeah. So does anybody see any changes in the minutes that need to be made to reflect the changes that were made in the decision letters? Because sometimes yeah. those two things can get out of sync once you edit one, but don't edit the other. I, I see one um, just grammatical mm -hmm. change on page four uh, where it says... Uh, Reasons for approval are one, the fence enhances opportunity for the buffer. Two, in the past, the committees allow landscaping to create, uh, it says a sponge. I think my original wording was a spongy uh, 
pervasive surface or spongy additional pervasive surfaces. I'm fine with that language as long as the word is spongy rather than sponge, just to reflect my original use of that term. <laughs> uh, does anybody see any other edits they would like to make? And I'm not gonna make a motion in case we wanna lump all of those in the same motion, so. And, and just one additional grammatical. Um, on Mead and E should be added to the end of the D on case number two, West okay. Mead Farms. Okay. And um, both the title, Westmead Farms, and in the beginning of the paragraph where it starts with Mr. Clay Wallace. Okay. So do we do we note those two changes there, Penny? What, what were those? Um, I think Westmead is spelled with an E. Oh, at the end of the D. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, it is. Okay, so right, right now we have two general proposals without a motion uh, to add an E to Westmead in every place where it occurs. All right, I'm paraphrasing. And, and then to uh, add a Y to sponge and remove the E. Um, I'm also noticing if you wanna change um, number five on the last page um, to create a healthy riparian buffer, the same that you did in the decision letter. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was talking about, okay. So uh, we have a third proposal to change repairing to riparian, R-I-P-A-R-I-A-N. And I'm happy with the rest of that sentence. So if that, I, I understand, I understand. All right, so we have three different proposals on the table. Would someone like to make a motion that would encompass all of those edits? I'll make a motion to approve the letters with all of those three edits. Okay. All right, motion's been made. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All right, motion's been made and probably seconded. Is there any more discussion on the motion? Does everybody understand the motion? Yeah. All right, seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. All right. Mr. Chairman, you ready? Thank you, Mr. Galbraith. I apologize. The uh, weather made it a little difficult for me to get here on time this morning. Um, <clears throat> so I believe we're probably ready for the first case before we start. Ms. Penny, when you get done with what you need to do there, if you could read into the record the, uh, the opening notice. The opening statement to the applicant. If you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of centuria with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Thank you. Uh, if the first uh, applicant wants to come up, um, it's um, 936 Gallatin Pike. It's like it's Madison's uh, Suburban Utility District. Uh, we, uh, I'm Carter Howard, and I'm here on behalf of Madison Suburban. Do you mind pushing the button there, sir, so we can hear you and record you? This one. Yes. Uh, and I would respectfully ask for a, a, a later time in the agenda. Our civil engineer is coming from Clarksville. He texted me at 10 after 6 and said he was on his way, but he's in that terrible okay. wreck that they had. Up there. To put a motion to move them to the end of the end of the agenda. All in favor? Yeah, it doesn't have to be an official motion, so that's fine. We'll hear you at the end. Thank, Thank you. So let's go ahead and hear the second matter. Uh, which is uh, White's Creek Pike, 4738. Stephen and Marcia Camp. <laughs> I tell you what, the, the, the traffic is really bad, so that could very well be it. <clears throat>
Good morning, gentlemen. Did you happen to hear the opening statement a moment ago, or were you outside? I heard the first one on the very first project. Is it applicable to this one as well? The notice? Yes. The statement? Yes. Okay. Okay. With that, then, we will uh, ask staff to uh, give us a statement on this variance request. The first case on the agenda is uh, case number 2018-00002-4738 Whites Creek Pike. Um, the inspector is Kimberly Hayes. The APN number is 03-0000-17300, Council District 1. Uh, councilman is Nick Leonardo. The applicant's request is to allow the following disturbance of the 25-foot Zone 2 floodway buffer of Earthman's Fort Creek to allow a previously constructed detached garage without a building permit to remain. The structure is 0.15 feet above the BFE of 500 feet above sea level. Um, they're also requesting waiver of buffer signage and continuous mowing and maintenance of the buffer. Um, the appellant is Stephen and Marcia Camp, represented by Masood Fati. Comments, stormwater staff had no comments. Codes had no comment provided. Planning, site is zoned AR2A, defer to stormwater for review. And Greenways request a Greenways conservation area of the floodway buffer plus 75 feet. Thank you. And we'll turn the floor over to the applicant. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Skip Hebert, landscape architect with Hebert Ball Land Design. Uh, we did a floodway mitigation plan uh, for the, uh, the improvements that have been made in the area uh, and have requested that these, um, the, or the, uh, um, the conditions uh, be granted. Um, we, the building is existing, it is, is there already, uh, the applicant put it there with, without uh, initially putting a building permit by, uh, by accident um, or, and, not, and, and didn't have the knowledge to get the building permit. Um, it is above the uh, minimum floodway or the flood elevation um, and we respectfully ask for your consideration of these conditions. There is a representative metro of Metro Greenways here, Cindy Harrison, uh, if you would like to get uh, any information, further information from her. And we have discussed this briefly with her uh, this morning, just prior to the meeting. It was the first we had heard that Metro Greenways wanted to have a, 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 um, an easement through there, and we have no uh, current uh, objections to that subject to maybe some other information from Metro. Uh, so we respectfully ask for your approval. Is there anyone here to speak uh, either in favor of or in opposition to uh, the variance request? Turn on the mic. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Um, White's Creek Greenway is on our master plan. For, or White's Creek is on our master plan for greenway development. So right now we're just asking for an easement um, with the ability at some point to uh, possibly work to develop a trail, part of a system. Right now we don't we don't have all the easements in place there, but long term, uh, and we would work with the property owner. Um, on how that might develop uh, if, if and when we are able to develop a trail out there and have enough easements. We have a greenway on the Fontenelle property and we have a greenway further south on Whites Creek. Um, so it's just part of our master plan. Right, you know, we're not asking for any changes to what the applicant is requesting today. And I think we could probably be um, a little flexible on the width of that easement. Obviously, the floodway and um, the 50 feet that the applicant is, is doing some remediation on, typically we ask for 75 feet. And I know that kind of crosses where the building is. Obviously, we're not trying to interfere with the building. Um, and it might be that that trail, you know, we don't know if the trail will actually get built in that spot or not as we go along, but we would like the easement. Thank you. Thank you. Is 
Anyone else here to speak either in favor of or in opposition to the variance request? Seeing none, let's committee members, if we have any questions or comments. I've always got a few, so I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, what, what, what is the red line, just staff on there? What, what contour does that represent? Where, is that the 100 year? I, I don't think it is. That, that, that is the 100 year as years. shown on the map. But when they, on their plan, it's delineated on contour, so. Okay. But he's, he's out of the floodway, which. Yeah, he is out of the floodway. out of the metro ordinance, so deal with that, okay. Um, do you have any objection to um, um, allowing or us adding a condition that you grant an easement subject to negotiating the location with Metro Greenways as a condition of the variance? I have no objection. Okay. And uh, the mitigation plan, I, I don't quite understand what that is, what, is, what the details are regarding the mitigation plan. Does anybody know? Or can the applicant explain? We uh, prepared the mitigation plan because the building is uh, within the 25 foot uh, zone two buffer. What, well, what does it comprise of? What does your- It's a garage, I a mean, storage building. The, the mitigation that you're planning, are you planting trees? Or we have trees and shrubs. Okay. And a native species. Um, the, the landscape plan over on the left side has a, um, a plant schedule that identifies what trees are going in. And those are all areas that are currently unvegetated? Correct. Okay. The, the area with the kind of clouded area that's existing vegetation, that area in there, and yeah, I guess I could do it up here. And then the, the, the trees that are being added are the ones that are being shown there with the cursor. Okay. So all the areas that were open, we tried to mitigate that within the, uh, the, the zone, uh, the A zone, or excuse me, the zone one, but the 50 foot buffer. So is the staff happy with the mitigation? I mean, it's, it's obviously not ideal that it's an after, after the fact situation, but this, is this a good ratio of mitigation for the intrusion into the zone two? We think uh, their planting plan combined with their, um, their plan that they're gonna continue the existing tree line there and allow those large trees to remain will, will provide an, an adequate uh, zone one buffer. What existing tree line, what are they claiming they're gonna do? The, um, the hatched area is existing forested area, so they're not gonna plant in that area. And then they're supplementing the zone one with these plantings along there. You can, you can see kind of the existing trees well, when it refreshes, you can see that there are existing trees here and then they're gonna supplement in these areas. It looks like they're mowing still throughout all of them, aren't they? We're currently mowing in the uh, the zone two buffer. That's one of the requests for a waiver. The zone one buffer the, it is currently being mowed in the open areas and that would cease once these plantings go in. So that's the, the mitigation is to add the plantings in the zone one, the 50 foot zone one buffer and the uh, mowing would cease in that area. That would be an, an unmaintained. Just zone area. one and behind? Yes. Are you the? Are you? Are you the landowner? I am. Could you explain to me how this happened? Uh, how did you build something there without coming in and asking for a building permit? So I determined the location that I prefer the garage to be in. And um, uh, the garage came about based upon just a desire uh, for woodworking, storage. And so I um, placed it in the area that I thought would be uh, far enough away to avoid any excessive noise from the main structure. And to prevent any pooling, uh, there's a slight slope um, where the, um, uh, where you can see where the gravel comes to the garage. And so I placed it in the um, uh, area where I thought the storm water would uh, avoid the building. Um, Did you build this yourself? I did build it myself. I do have a uh, letter from an architect uh, stating that uh, it's structurally sound. Okay. So you just, are you a builder? Is that what you do for a profession? I am. Okay. So you just decided to build a garage because you knew I you did. could do it. 
Okay. So and didn't ask for any permits. Cause you That's correct, sir. Okay. Just trying to figure out what the story is. And then this that picture that we had photo earlier is that a, a, a burn spot? I mean, is that a campfire? What is that? That's um, uh, trees, uh, just uh, lumber to be cut. And so there are still trees and foliage in there, uh, but there's. Um, Wait, so what's uh, that dark spot though? Why trees from clearing when we cleared the property. So you did clear in that area, zone one area. When we built the house, that was cleared. Yes. It's right there to the right of the building on that picture on the back. Oh, so that's a pile of brush. That's it, yes. Does this garage have a bathroom or? It has no plumbing, no electrical. Okay. But you said you were working, you're going to work out there? That's correct. So you you're asking. Install? So <laughs> that's not correct. So um, directly speaking, I, spilt, I built the garage um, with the understanding of what I needed to do the work that I desire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got to a point where um, Upon my own conviction, I submitted myself to Stormwater on that. So um, that's what happened. So, so you weren't cited? Uh, no, sir. Nobody came and got me or anything. I, so how did you know to submit to Stormwater? I'm a contractor, and I didn't do what okay. I was supposed to do. All right. Well, why didn't you do that originally? I guess that's my question. What, what alerted you to the fact that you had an issue that you didn't realize you had? A personal conviction. I mean, when you first put it there, did you realize you were in the buffer? I did not. I was not aware I was in the buffer. And how did you learn that you ended up being in a buffer? When I submitted um, my project to Stormwater, they let me know. At, you submitted it after you built it? Yes, I came into Stormwater and said I built a building. I shouldn't have built it. I'd like to finish it, but here's what I've done. How did you know you shouldn't have built it there if you didn't I'm a know? contractor. No, it wasn't whether or not I shouldn't have built it there. It was whether or not I should have built the building without a permit. Yeah. And when I came in to submit that information to Stormwater, let me know I was in the buffer. Yeah, you, gotcha. were, you were going to offset, do rain gardens or whatever you would have to normally do. So you submitted a plan, and then you found out you were in the buffers. I'm sorry, I missed that, Mr. Dale. Um, uh, I guess, like you said, you submitted for a permit because you knew that Stormwater needed to review your plan. You didn't know at the time you submitted that you were in the buffer. You just needed to offset whatever increase in impervious surface the, the, the structure created. If we're on the same page, yeah. my, under, my, my perspective is that I submitted the project because I knew it needed to be finished right. Okay. And then when I came in to do that, I was made aware that I was okay. in the buffer. I understand. Thank you. Have, have you, uh, you're, you're a building contractor, right? Yes, sir. Have you ever had to apply for a stormwater? Yes, I built that house. In uh, the past? Yes, sir. I, I dealt directly with stormwater and building the house. It's so, just infill development standards, I think. Okay. Yeah. You've never, have you ever submitted a, a, a have you ever been before this committee before in a, a, for a variance? No, sir. All right. Appreciate you volunteering it once you figured out what you did. <laughs> Not some people don't do that. Nobody wants to make a motion. 
I, I know y'all don't want to sit here all day long. <clears throat> so I will, I, will, I will make a motion, at least we can have more discussion or whatever. I, I'll make a motion that we approve this variance as submitted. Were there any, so staff had no comments, right? There were no, no said the Greenway comment, okay. And the applicants uh, must work with Metro Greenways in order to provide an adequate easement for uh, a Metro Greenway. That's I'll second that motion. Okay. Got a motion and a second, so open it up for discussion. Um, I'll start with the discussion. I, I don't think we should allow the continuing more than maintenance. I mean, for the most part. Of the zone two. Uh, for certain zone one, because it's not written that way. Uh, but probably the zone two. I just don't understand why we're yeah, I agree. granting variances for something that shouldn't happen in the first place. I, I understand it was a mistake, but I, I just. I agree. Th it's not like this. we would have accepted that had this come before, because this, there's plenty of property here. Right. This, there's no hardship on this lot. And if they're not supposed to be, you know, if, if it's policy not to maintain zone one or zone two, then I don't know why we would be allowing it. Chairman? You're allowed to maintain the zone two. So that's not even part of the variance request? No, no sir. The variance request is to allow impervious areas in the zone two, which is not permissible. But, Mr. Chairman, I, uh, I guess it depends on what you, if you want to mitigate spot for spot, he has impervious service in zone two. If, if you're suggesting that he not mow zone two, to me that would be a proper mitigation for zone two as opposed to just making the zone one spongier. Right, I hear your point. I think mine, I, I was just ignorant. Um, zone two allows, you're allowed to mow and maintain zone two, so that's not part of this request. No, sir. Okay. Right, you can make that a condition. That's what I'm asking. How would you feel about not mowing the zone two if someone made that as a condition of the variance? I'll discontinue uh, mowing zone two. I don't think that's necessary. I, that mitigated in zone one, and it's allowed to mow in zone two. Um, I mean, I wish he would have come to us ahead of time, but we probably would have allowed that with the mitigation that he's done since it's allowed to mow in zone two. I, I, I guess my concern is that people are allowed to mow the zone two when they follow the rules. If I could get a clarification from the applicants, this area right here that's not included in the hatched existing trees but isn't being planted, are you planning on mowing that spot? I have, um, I will discontinue mowing there. I have discontinued mowing there. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so I guess what I would, <laughs> realizing my, uh, my mistake, I would say that uh, I would like to um, uh, modify the motion to, um, I don't think they should be exempt from this buffer signposting. Uh, and then the, as far as the, the mowing and maintenance, it just needs to be clarified that they're talking about zone one. I guess that is implied, but uh, other than that, I, I, I don't think we should put an extra requirement that they not maintain zone two. I, I was really just not understanding what the, the request was for the variance fund. So I, I, I would make a motion to, um, to um, strike this exemption from the sign buffer posting. And um, if, if the record reflects, based on staff comments, that there will be no mowing in zone one, even yeah. where mitigation is not planned, where they're, where they're open, you just said you were going to stop mowing anywhere in zone one, then I'd be happy with that motion, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Chair, do you want me to restate my motion? Yeah. Are we done yet? Go ahead. Right. You made a motion and right. we had discussion. Okay, so we no second to that motion. No, second to you it. did second. Okay. Yeah, and so the motion's still clear, and my motion is to amend your motion. Okay. All right. Can I can I add that on the buffer signage they can work with staff to make them more residential looking. Sure. Signs. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's a motion to amend the motion. I'll mm -hmm. second to, that. Okay. All right. All right. 
So we'll stay with the amendment is it's, uh, the motion. So, so the amendment to the motion would be that there a signage be required, a uh, buffer signage be required, that signage be designed in a manner that would be residentially aesthetic, and also to make sure the applicant is aware that there is no mowing allowed in the zone one buffer. Is that right? Am I missing anything? And there's a greenway very, um, yeah. the green bit. The greenway is allowed. All right. Well, that's part of the original motion. So we're just voting on the amendment right okay. now. So that that's the, that's my amendment to the motion. Amen. So I guess we need to vote on that, right? Yeah, we'll have a vote in just a second. Is, does the, the regulation state just within the zone one, or does it state from the zone one all the way to the waterway? How the does flood, it? The floodway is part of the zone one. So yes. anything from zone one beyond would be a no mow area. Okay. Yeah. So zone one, by definition, is that 50 foot plus all the floodway? Yes, sir. Okay. That's what I was trying to... All right, there's a motion on the floor. Just put it up for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Motion passes unanimously. We're, we're back to the original motion now, though. We just voted on the amendment, right? Yep. So now, <laughs> now let's vote on the amended motion. Aye. Sorry. All right, the motion as amended. Now up for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for coming for us. Thank you. Have a nice day. All right. One down. Let's go <laughs> to the next one. Looks like it's uh, Metro Public Works and Century Farms. If the applicant would like to come up, that'd be great. And Chairman, I need to recuse myself. Certainly, you're allowed to make you miss Stokes. Mr. Chairman, I, I routinely acknowledge that I know the gentleman sitting in front of us. He used to be my graduate student, but I think I can evaluate his request just like I used to evaluate his grades objectively. It has been shown that way in previous. <laughs> or, or with a bias against you. <laughs> uh, were you here, um, and anyone else that's in the audience for the applicant, when the opening statement was read? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Uh, then um, let's go ahead and turn it over to staff uh, uh, for a summary of the variance request. This variance is number 20180000004. Public right of way in lot two, Century Farms at zero Cane Ridge Road, Council District 32. Applicants request preliminary stormwater management plan approval is requested. The preliminary plan includes a variance to request a variance request to allow the following: number one, disturbance to stream buffer; number two, disturbance to wetland buffer; number three, disturbance to wetland. The appellant is Century Farms LLC. The representative is, uh, says Michael Pig, but it's Jeff Cundiff with Partners Design Solutions. Uh, comments from stormwater staff. Staff requests the applicant attempts to minimize the length of the bridge and the disturbance to the stream bed. A spanned bridge should be considered. Codes, no comment provided. Planning, stormwater variance plans are consistent with the approved SP site plan and plat for the public right of way. Greenways uh, defers to Stormwater Management Committee comments. Thank you. With that, we'll turn it over to the applicant. Uh, thank you for your time. I, I appreciate it. Uh, we are here today to uh, seek your input. And um, this, we decided to come forward early in the process as we're developing our plans so that we can work together to come up with a, a solution that everybody is happy with. Um, this property is located essentially on an island, and as part of the development, what they're, they're required to do from federal highways is connect the new interchange. I don't know if you can zoom out just a little bit on that one, but exit 60 is getting uh, redone by TDOT, and federal highways has put the condition upon 
this development to connect that interchange to the existing roadway network. And in order to do that, the property is bound uh, by a creek on one side, which is a tributary to Collins Creek, and the interstate on the other side. So we have to cross it. Um, so we've tried to develop a plan to minimize our impacts and um, you know, try to retain as much of the existing bed and bank and stream features as we can. Um, we have not submitted a, a uh, mitigation plan at this time because we, we want to hear your input. And as we're preparing our permit applications to TDEC and the Corps of Engineers, uh, we want to try to come up with a solution that appeases all agencies. Metro Public Works has an agreement in place with TDOT to build the, these collector roads. Um, and, uh, you know, we appreciate your time and willingness, and we're here to listen and, and have a discussion so that when we come back for a formal um, request, hopefully we will be able to address some of your concerns. Thank you. Is anyone here to speak either in favor of or in opposition to this uh, request? Seeing none, we will uh, open the discussion up to the, open the floor up to the committee for questions. It would be helpful for, for me if you could actually go across the site and show me what you're building um, and where it's okay. impeding the buffers. Gladly. Can you, um, can you pull up the plans and go to sheet the third sheet in, which is C0.05. It should be the third one down. There you go. So this is a big picture here, um, which shows the entire property and the required roads that are needed to collect the interchange modification. This is an existing Hickory Hollow Parkway interchange that is being modified. The construction plans have just been turned into TDOT and they're preparing to uh, let that construction. Uh, along with that was a condition to build these roads, which you see kind of dotted. Those are, the, those are the proposed roads. And the creek itself essentially just is like a horseshoe around the development. And um, so in order, okay, there you go, fall in the hand right there. You see, you see that? Yes, sir. Okay, so this application got nothing to do with that. No, sir. That's going to be built. That's T dot. Right. What we're talking about is the dotted lines. Yes, sir. Down below, and the one that specifically you're talking about is the one to the left. To the right. To the right. right. Yes. Sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I will point out that um, some of the impact due the length of it is due to the fact that the uh, stream and the road are essentially parallel in that location. And we've tried to, to minimize that and make it as perpendicular as we can, but we're really constrained. There's a lot of constraints, I guess, on that boundary there. Isn't there a new office development in this area? Where yes, that is the CHS site, which yeah, you see. Is that what of, I see, that parking yes, right there? Yes, okay. that's it. So we've already dealt with this creek. Yes. Directly to the where that enters. We had that was a couple months ago. Okay. You're talking about the, the CHS development came before us maybe once. Is that twice. the mass transit comma? No. Comma. It's an office development that I can't remember what the issue was, but the road there runs right up next to the creek all the way through. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I, I, given that fact, I think it'd be helpful if staff could tell us what we did on that site uh, when this site comes up for with the specific variance. I think it may, have, it may have had to do with the uh, crossings because you got to cross it in order to get to the road. Okay. Right, maybe. I and I can speak to that a little bit. Um, we did not file the application for CHS, but my understanding is, and Courtney, you may be able to clarify, but my understanding is that they had to provide some additional, um, you know, maybe um, 
infiltration areas or something? CHS was because there were some wetland areas within that development. Right. Yeah. And then the old Franklin Road was due to the widening for a right and left turn lane. Uh, the left being at where you would turn in on Cane Ridge Parkway and the right being at Cane Ridge Road. That interchange project or intersection project and widening did not include, it stopped before what they are requesting now, which is where the stream crosses under Cane Ridge Road. And we are going to upsize that culvert to uh, be able to flow the 100-year storm, which it cannot today. Yeah, so that is part of what we're trying to do and improve that. And so we're here to talk about the fact that you're about to put a large exchange within the buffers. Uh, the fact that we're going to have to come back before you to ask for your permission to uh, construct that culvert there and, and construct and it's these within public. The it's within yeah. the buffers too, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So I mean, we to build the public infrastructure that's required, um, we have to cross this at some point. So yeah. that's a roundabout. Yes, sir. Where does that roundabout fall on the other plan? The overall plan? Yeah. Cause it's right, you see the arrow where it's pointing and kind of right there, it's right, that's pointing okay. to the dead center of that roundabout. That's the roundabout, okay. Yes, ma'am. And then the wetland, is that over? It's just to the left of the arrow, yes, right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those are the only two areas throughout that proposed roadway that you see stormwater issues. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, so what, I'm sorry, no, go, ahead. go ahead. I just want to be clear, staff, you are recommending a span bridge for just to cover that? To try to limit the impact uh, of the creek and how long it's going to be covered, limit the size of the, or length of the structure. If you span it, it wouldn't have to be maybe as long. How does a span affect a roundabout? Well, this, this would become before the roundabout. Mm -hmm. That little, that creek is crossing. Uh, that was mm -hmm. Right here, they're gonna have to, because that's a new, they're gonna have to culvert the creek right there to get across that, then there's a roundabout, then the road comes up, then there's another creek crossing, and they connect. And I will point out that there's an existing crossing there today. There is. Yes. So. So when you said you're proposing to upsize the existing culvert to carry a 100-year storm event, does that imply that you're leaning against a span, or is that a different site? No. Um, I, I, I don't think. I think we have maybe some flexibility there. Um, and I hear the comment to try to minimize, so I think we can as we develop the final plans, we can look at opportunities for that, whatever they may be, um, whether it's a span or just reducing the length or, um, yeah, th I think we can look at that. Would a, would a span still have a concrete apron underneath it or would it be an open creek bed, creek bed with just um, supporting structures that would just go vertically from I mean, the bridge it, to the ground. It would have the, the girders and the, and the spans, the abutments on the sides to, to hold it up, but that's, uh, it wouldn't have a concrete bottom or anything like that. It would be a bottomless structure. And, and you probably know where I'm going with this. I think you came to us in the past mm -hmm. with a bottomless three-sided mm -hmm. culvert. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, and so you know how to do this. Oh yeah, and the bed of this stream is just bedrock. And it's just flat across, essentially. You can kind of you can't see it as well right there in that picture, but some of the pictures in the package I think show it a little better. All those pastures are dumping a lot of water into the creek, scouring the creek. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, over the years. Does the committee have any more? Qu uh, Go ahead. Just, what's the length of the existing culvert compared to the one you're trying to put in? Uh, it's a pro it's approximately um, a third of what it would be required with the additional lanage and and the reason it jumps up is because of the just the fact that it's like this versus being perpendicular. Um, so.
Well, you know, given my unique perspective, uh, you know, a span in mitigation would be helpful. Can't say that's a guarantee for my vote or, or a majority of votes, but that's already where staff is leaning. And um, runoff is not going to decrease as this area develops. So maybe a span is is a is a is a little safer option as well. I'm not sure there's really opportunity to decrease the length, is there? I mean, we, we can look at it. We've tried to do, we try to minimize our impacts already, but. Um, I mean, if you decrease the length, all you're doing is changing the direction of the stream at some point. You're putting right. angles in it that it doesn't naturally have, which I think in the long term is going to be detrimental. Mm -hmm. well, maybe I'm wrong, but it, it just seems like that. Is there a way to do it that I'm not recognizing? Yeah, I, well, I guess you can always reroute the road. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that's good either. Yeah. So I, I, I guess you hear my perspective. I can understand how that would be difficult, mm -hmm. but certainly an, an uh, uh, admirable objective. Am I missing something? I think the idea would be that you would have the bridge would be the riding surface of the road and you wouldn't have any fill. The fill in between the road surface and the top of the box bridge uh, would create a longer bridge because of having to run out um, just the slopes to tie into the bridge itself. So the idea would be that it would be shorter and spanned and try to keep, keep it in more in line with the existing or natural path of the stream. Okay, so it is keeping in line with the natural yes. path. Okay. Any other comments, questions, discussions? Did you tell us anything about the wetland? Is it, do you know anything about it? I mean, it's an isolated wetland. Yeah. Um, there's there's some pictures of it in there. Um, it, 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 there's, we can't really avoid it in this scenario. So, um, you know, we're asking for, uh, you know, any feedback you have relative to that also, so. What's the core of the state told you about it? Have they have they, is the court saying it's jurisdictional or? Can you speak to that, Dave? Calling in reinforcements here. Hi, Dave Core with BDY Environmental. Um, we've just recently delineated that wetland. It's actually smaller than what's on there. Uh, it's an old farm pond. It's had some debris pushed into it, so it's kind of got a peninsula that, that goes into it. Um, it's really just something that was dug out on the top of the hill. Uh, we haven't engaged, we, we have a meeting uh, next week with the, the Corps, so uh, we'll be talking about it with them then, but neither agency has looked at it yet. You know, being the gray head on this board, I've been here a while, and one of the things that seems to help applicants is having lots of uh, data about the, the resource, uh, scientific data, keeps us from making guesses <laughs> about what's there and, and, and worse yet assumptions. And then, and then secondly, um, uh, having as much documentation from regulatory authorities coming into the meeting as possible. Um, you know, folks, we've had applicants come in and say the court said this or the state said that. If they don't have a piece of paper with an email, with language from an email from a state regulator, from a re federal regulator, or an official decision letter of some type from the state or the feds, it, you know, the words really don't mean that much to us. So as much documentation as you can bring, it'll, it'll move things along a lot faster, at least in terms of our understanding. Mm -hmm. May I ask you a question relative to that? Um, in the past, it's been, uh, I've seen different things, but do you, is there a requirement to have your TDEC and or core permits in hand before y'all will act, or can we come in here once we have a confidence level and some sort of, uh, you know, feedback from them, um, 
you know, that we kind of understand which direction they're going to head. Historically, um, you will catch more grief and have to answer much more questions if you don't have them in hand yet. Mm -hmm. And they would, but then if it does pass, which sometimes it does, is approved with the condition that they are ultimately granted. So it has happened both ways, but I can tell you it's much easier to move through here when you already have them in hand. Yeah, understood. I have a curiosity question. Mm -hmm. um, I know she got this big turner, this big roundabout. Why is that roundabout there? Just out of curiosity. It has nothing to do with your request. Uh, so th this development and the area, this interchange is expected to um, basically handle 80,000 trips a day, mm -hmm. uh, which is about the equivalent of three uh, Franklin interchanges. So it, there's a, a lot of traffic. And Just this a calming feature, is that what you're telling me? Uh, I mean, versus having a um, you know full-blown interchange there in, in order to more efficiently move people through and onto the interstate. And, and here, Are you the thinking about moving Old Franklin Pike to and relocating, relocating that to this roundabout? We have, no, we've improved Old Franklin um, you know, through that's under construction right now. Okay. So, I'm just curious. It just seems like there's that's so close to another intersection. I mm -hmm. just didn't understand it. Yeah, and the 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 existing Cane Ridge Road, we worked with the community, and they really want to try to maintain the rural character of it. Mm -hmm. So that's part of the reason why it ties in the way it does, just in order to kind of protect that. I'd like to make a motion to approve the preliminary uh, request. As submitted. I'll second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Oh, we've got a taker. I'm about to vote. <laughs> All right. Seeing no discussion, we'd like to have a vote on the motion to approve the uh, request as submitted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, it's unanimous. The preliminary Thank vote. you for your time. Approved. Moving on to the, um, I guess, what was the fourth matter on the agenda? Am I reading that correct? Yes. Hides Ferry Pike. If the applicant would like to come up to the table. Welcome back, Ms. Stokes. Thank you. Is the applicant here? Wow. <laughs> Let's take a bathroom break for two, three minutes. Uh, when we're all back at the table, then we'll ask if the applicant's here again. So adjourned for now. And then uh, we need to go ahead and read the opening statement again, Miss Penny, if we could do that. Uh, because we've got new members here now, or new new applicants, new new peoples. Our opening statement to the applicant: If you're not satisfied with a decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may ap appeal the decision by filing for a writ of centuria with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that our procedural requirements have been satisfied. Thank you so much. Now we'll turn it over to the staff for a short summary of the uh, applicant's request. Uh, Following request is for 2018000005-3605 Hides Ferry Pike, uh, located at 3605 Hides Ferry Pike, Council District 2. The applicant's request is the following request is to allow the following number one stream buffer disturbance for sidewalk. The appellant is Frank Santis. The representative is Jared Gray from Civil Design Consultants, LLC. Comments from the stormwater staff. Staff recommends shallower side slopes of three to one and stabilization with appropriate vegetation per geotechnical recommendations. Codes no comment provided. Planning, final SP plan under, view, under review. Revised plans must be submitted by the applicant. Planning will not sign off on a plan. 
sign off on sale a plan which is consistent with the approved preliminary SP has been submitted for review. Greenways defers to Stormwater Management Committee comments. Thank you so much. We'll turn it over to the applicant. Good morning, Jared. Good morning, Jared Gray, Civil Design Consultants. Appreciate the opportunity to meet with you today. Uh, we agree with staff comments and uh, we do ask for approval. Is there anyone here today to speak either in favor of or in opposition to the variance request? Seeing none, uh, let's turn the uh, Mike's over to the uh, committee members. I'll start off, let me make sure I understand. This is just a request because you've got to put sidewalks under the ordinance within a buffer? That is correct. And you're trying to minimize your disturbance of that buffer and still comply with the ordinance? That is correct. But, um, and just to clarify, so your statement to say we agree, so you're incorporating all the staff comments and you revise the plans for their suggestion? That is correct. Three to one side slopes. We showed two to one initially. Okay. Move for approval. I second. You guys are moving fast. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we can have a comment. I want to, I've got a comment. All right. We've got a motion and a second uh, on the floor. Now we open up the floor for discussion on the motion. Let's have fun a little bit today. <laughs> so, uh, so if we don't grant your request, you can't put in a sidewalk, right? That is correct. Then you can't get your SP approved. Right? That is correct. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that, isn't that funny? <laughs> It seems to me that there, that you shouldn't have to do this, that there would be some expedited way. Uh, I would agree. So, I mean, you had to go through the whole process, I assume, do applications and pay fees and, yeah. Correct. And that I, seems to be antiquated to me. I talked about this a long time ago. I think we have. Work with yeah. Works and exactly. And in a situation like this where you're forced to put in a sidewalk and you've got a buffer, you should be, there should be some expedited process. So that's just my, my, Having fun today. Well, I think that gets back to the consent agenda we've talked yeah, about in the past. Yeah, exactly. Maybe right. one day we'll talk about that again. Maybe okay. Well, I just want to bring that up a new we, we, you know, just talk oh. about that again. Good point. But I right. you know we're in, a, we're in, a, we're in a, a city right now that, you know, sidewalks are precious. And so anything you do anywhere, I don't care where it is, it's going to have to have a sidewalk. So thank you. Do you have something? All right. Uh, we'll put it up for a vote. Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing <coughs> none. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. With that, what time, where is it that we tell them what time they're going to be heard? I sent them an email. Is that where, do I have that? Yeah, this is on the... What time did we say the next matter on five? Which one? So on five, we told them at that time. 10-15. Yeah. But I did state in that email as well that depending on the case, it might vary. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. We went a little bit out of order because the first matter wasn't here, but the fifth matter is what we're on, and the fifth matter, the timing they were told, isn't we haven't even gotten close to yet. So let's go ahead and go back to the first matter. So let's hear the first applicant that was on the agenda, um, which was Madison Suburban Utility District. If that applicant is here, if you could come up, that'd be wonderful. Glad you made it safe. Hey, yes, <laughs> I apologize. No, I understand that traffic was really bad. Um, and so we will turn it over next to staff. You were here just a moment ago when we read the opening statement. I was. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so we'll turn it over to staff for a short summary of the request. All right. Uh, next case on the agenda is case number 2017-00032, Madison Suburban Utility District. Uh, the address is 936 Gallatin Pike. APN number is 05108000900. Inspector is Boots O'Hara. This is Council District 8 by Nancy Van Rees. Um, the applicant's request is to allow disturbance of the floodway zone one and zone two floodway buffers of Gibson Creek 
to allow for construction of at-grade parking facilities, placement of BMPs, and construction of sidewalks to allow 607 cubic yards of cut below the two-year flood elevation, continuous mowing and maintenance of the buffer, and also waiver of buffer signage. The appellant is Madison Suburban Utility District. Representative is William M. Souter, Souter Surveying and Land Planning Incorporated. Comments, stormwater staff. Staff is unsure of what mitigation is being provided. Codes, no comment provided. Planning, zone CS defer to stormwater for review, and green waste to defers to stormwater management committee comments. Thank you. With that, we'll turn the floor over to the applicant. My name is Matt Souter, and um, I'm with Souter Surveying. I'm representing Madison Suburban, and we've submitted a, a plan for pretty much an at-grade parking facility. Uh, what we've got is an existing, uh, well, it's, it's a lot that used to house a commercial building complex, and, and it was an old parking lot around it, and uh, it has since flooded, and the flood actually removed the building from its foundation and uh, did a lot of damage. So we've got the remains of an old parking lot, uh, compacted gravel, and uh, the footprint of the old basement for the building left on the lot. And what we're proposing to do is basically reshape the lot. We're not adding any grade to it. Uh, we just want to reshape the the existing asphalt, mill it up, and replace it with new asphalt, and uh, relocate that, kind of get rid of that steep basement whole footprint and and reshape it into a more or less uh, holding basin for stormwater and uh, and of course plant trees and vegetation per our landscape plan thank you is there anyone here to speak either in opposition to or in favor of the proposed request yes sir please come up if you could step up to that mic up there or are you the applicant? Uh, no, I'm, I work with the applicant, but I'm here on behalf of the, uh, actually the city. Wonderful. Manager. If you could step that mic right there at that oh, podium. Right. Yeah, yeah that's, it's, uh, it, that's all right. And uh, if you could push the same button, that way it turns on. If you could state your name and where you lived before you start, then uh, we'd love to hear your comments. My name's Carter Howard, and uh, I'm with the Carter Company, Inc., and I have worked with the Madison Water District over a period of 35 years, but I've also been a lifelong resident of Madison and seen uh, the Madison community um, go through various uh, stages of development and lack of development. My only comment today is that this lot is in the heart of Madison and it is an eyesore, a, a really bad eyesore. With that said, it also um, it creates an area where uh, the homeless and others, we've tried to provide places in Madison for them, but this is conducive to what they need. There's a big culvert there. I know y'all are well familiar with Gibson Creek and have dealt with it for many years. The district really desires they don't have a use for this land other than parking. And it would, but in addition to that, they desire on behalf of the community to uh, upgrade this area, let it not be an eyesore. They have no plans whatsoever to ever try and build anything on it and, and make it safer. Right now, it has a fence around it, but that, that lot is dangerous. I mean, there's big boulders, there's glass, there's other things, and they're trying to remedy that now. But a nice parking lot with trees and whatever Matt and them are going to decide to do would be very beneficial to the community of Madison as a whole and would fit in, uh, this is my opinion, would fit in with the revitalization efforts that are going on in Madison. This sits right in the center of it and would be uh, something that I think the citizens of Madison would truly benefit from. And I thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak either in favor of or in opposition to the request? There is also an email that was sent by a council member of that district 
uh, there should be a copy in your package. Thank you. And she's just stating that she's in support. Wonderful. All right, with that, we will turn it over to um, questions from the committee. Okay, I want to try to understand what you're rearranging. If you'll go to the cross section B on the last page of your plans, um, the existing ground, the dash line, um, can you tell us what we're looking at there? Is, is, um, is there is there a conveyance? Uh, no, I was asked to provide a, cr a cross section just to basically give you a, a side view of actually what was being cut and what was being filled. Uh, if, if you reference sheet C8.00, it, it shows where the actual cross section lines were cut through the proposed uh, more or less basin area. Uh, so I kind of just tried to give you two views, one of the upper view, the top of the berm, and, and one that would essentially cut through the center of the, the basin. Okay, that, that's what I was trying to get at, is, is that it, it, because of the scale, the basin looks like a stream channel. We're not talking about a stream channel. That's correct. And um, uh, But you are proposing to raise the new basin a little higher. Is that right, where it says proposed grade? Uh, in por portions of the area will have to be filled, yes, okay. and we're uh, we're going to use that, you know, we're going to use cut from on site, that's field. correct. Okay, so, so in terms of, um, you know, one of the things that typically concerns us about cuts in, uh, I think I saw somewhere you're making cuts in the floodway. Is that right? Yes. The two-year, yes. the two-year, yeah. The, the majority so, of the site is in the is in the floodway, and, and you know. So, so typically, you know, there can be some instability issues, but um, but since you don't have a since the primary conveyance of water is not on the site but adjacent to the site. That's right? correct. Um, what we primarily would be concerned about would be the the floodway flow. Okay. Okay, which typically is the fastest flow. What, what are the chances that a flood would just peel all this concrete up and throw the trees around because it's in the floodway? Well, uh, not any greater post-construction than pre-construction, I would assume. Uh, yeah, I, there's always a, a possibility that some kind of flood event could I mean, I, do some I, damage. Yeah, I, I definitely understand um, our civic goal is to deal with eyesores and improving our community. Our, our civic responsibility is to make sure we're not putting something there that'll just wash away. Right. So can you give us any kind of assurance on, on how stable this would be in the floodway? Is it, uh, it, it might, maybe it would help if staff could help me understand that. Is this up high in the watershed? Is it down low in the watershed? I think it might be interesting to, Mr. Calvert, to look at the fact that where Gallatin Pike is in relation to that, because I believe what will actually happen is you're not going to have, even though the floodway line is there, I don't know, what's the elevation of Gallatin there? Uh, it's right 443 or something, 444, I would I would assume. And then what's the floodway elevation? It's it's right around to 444. It actually changes. It's uh, barely going to be scouring right over Gallatin Pike right there. It is different, but, but I think it's it, it is going to protect it somewhat. You've also got the uh, you know the understream current that goes under it. It'll, it'll that a lot's really going to act like a kind of like an eddy, like a ponding area for a lot of that water. Yeah. So can, can we can we pull up a topo map to show where this is? Some of us are blacked out, and some of us are. Okay. Is, it, is this a headwater area? And I realize that's a huge, wide, relative term, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not positive if that. Okay. Can you zoom out some what more? What part of the Gibson you, Creek this is on? Can you? Is is this a is this a topographic map or just a picture um, of a site with with lines? It doesn't have the contours on. Okay. Can we pull up a contour map of some kind? I, that's what I'm thinking. I just want to know it. So. Can 
Can you back out some more? <laughs> Maybe even back out to where we can keep the side in the middle. Okay, all right. Back out one more, a couple more times if you don't mind. Okay. Yeah, it's not as bad as the area to the left, is it? Mr. Chairman, yeah. <clears throat> Roger Lindsay. This is one of the most oddly modeled sections, probably in all of Davidson County. Uh, it is on Gibson Creek. It uh, experienced an extreme flood event in August of 2013 when a massive amount of rain fell just in this basin, flooding a good number of houses. And it was probably one of the more significant localized basin storm events, extreme storm events that, we, that occurred during the years following the 2010 flood. Because Gibson Creek had never really been on our radar as a, an area of, of significant potential concern or problem, what have you. But <clears throat> anecdotally, it's, it was one of the oddest things that we've dealt with flood re related because the, the old worn out commercial facility that occupied this entire site included an old motor inn, if you will, an old motel with two buildings that literally straddled the creek from bank to bank. They literally were built on top of stone walls on the bank of the, of the, of the creek as it flowed up to and under Gallatin Pike. And it literally, the extent of the flow literally lifted the first building off of its foundation and dropped it over into the parking lot. And we had, at the time, had multiple pictures of this because it was really a freak event. It disrupted the lives of a good number of residents that lived underneath those two buildings. <laughs> it was a, quite a homeless population that lived under those two buildings, plus the major culvert under Gallatin Pike. But to continue the, the nature of the strangeness of this, and this is not a foreign sight to you because downstream of the culvert, is another strip shopping center. There was a Sherwin-Williams paint store in the middle of that shopping center that got five feet of water in it. It totally demolished the interior of the Sherwin-Williams store because that entire commercial strip center was built again on top of this creek. The creek doesn't resurface until it's beyond another parking lot downstream of the, the, the strip shopping center where the Sherwin-Williams and, and a little health, home health care center and some other buildings, a Chinese restaurant that opened for business the next morning. <laughs> Amazing feats of flood recovery. <clears throat> because we were there the next morning and we, we were walking and looking at the extent of the damage in this downstream strip shopping center and I walked into the Chinese restaurant to ask, how much water they got and how significant their damage was and they asked me if I wanted the buffet because they were open for business. But nonetheless, a good bit of the, the uh, facility downstream of the, of the culvert was, uh, was damaged and I don't know if any, much of it is, is occupied again today. But there have been a project, there's another project immediately north of that Chinese restaurant that has been before this commission because it was another one of those little, what was the name of the, the, the hotel that, um, we had multiple variance requests. Chet Rhodes came before this commission multiple times to request variances to build that little micro hotel, hotel structure that he wanted to build immediately north of this structure. And so there's a wide floodway that's described in the modeling because that's the way it models. But all of that creek conveyance is underground. And so the fact that there's a modeled floodway through much of the site that is our topic of discussion today and across Gallatin Pike and literally through the middle of a building that exists below it is it's just a it's just a weird weirdly modeled situation. So right here, this 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 creek is actually a pipe underground. On through below, this below it's a large it's a large probably box culvert like conveyance that that goes below Gallatin Pike upstream and doesn't resurface until well past Gallatin Pike, the shopping center, and another parking lot beyond that. Uh, it comes out 
If we can scan a little bit, <laughs> not more. <laughs> it eventually resurfaces. <laughs> now, hopefully, our screens eventually. From a, from a stormwater perspective, we're in the process right now of buying to demolish a great number of houses along Gibson Creek, both upstream and downstream of this area, because there were houses that significantly flooded. Uh, we've determined that many of those houses have flooded. Uh, the repetitive loss structures they, they flood somewhat routinely. And so we have a better sense of, of the se severity of some of the, the flooding that occurs along this area. And from a staff perspective, the construction of a, of a new parking facility, a parking lot, essentially a flat development, no new structures, no new buildings, no new shopping centers on this site is probably the far better use from, from the perspective of concern for damage in the future. So, so a parking lot, is, it, is, this, is this a good oh, yeah. use of this site? <clears throat> That's what I think. Any more questions or comments from the committee? I will ask for clarification. What the, <clears throat> if it wasn't mentioned earlier, the no structure and the floodway ordinance does allow for surface parking in there. Yes, sir. With a variance. Staff had comments regarding your um, mitigation that's proposed. What, can you explain what that is? Well, we have submitted a landscaping plan um, that we had a landscape architect draw up for us. Uh, what we're trying to achieve here is we want, we want to, to put as much vegetation on the site as possible uh, to, of course, increase absorption of water and open up some green spaces. Um, we wanted to limit the number of large trees to kind of discourage further use of the site as you know, a homeless area, uh, but we also wanted to plant enough trees to make it look nice. You know, we, we submitted this, this mitigation plan um, as our best view of how it, it should be planted, but we're definitely open to suggestions or, you know, any ways that, that we can work with you guys on increasing that if needed. Yes. So I guess question to the staff, were there specific things you were looking for that you didn't see in the plan or suggestions? We just weren't sure what portion of it was mitigation and what was required landscaping. Okay. I cannot. I would have to uh, transfer that to my landscape architect. I don't. I don't know. I'm not aware of, of any landscape that was actually required. Uh, like I said, we we were kind of just submitting this as you know, kind of a, a different situation. Anyways, you know, we're not we're not really increasing any impervious surfaces or anything. We're, we're at, everything that's added is pretty much in addition to what was there. So you know. Okay, I'm going to make a motion um, if we're ready. Anybody want to ask any other questions? Okay, Mr. Chairman, can I make a motion? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm going to move to approve with the caveat that staff resolve uh, specifics about mitigation, um, period. And I'll second. All right, we've got a motion and a second for approval with... Uh, condition the staff resolve its issues mitigation. Any discussion about the motion on the table? Seeing none, put the motion up for a vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, it's unanimous approval. Thank you. We're on a roll in this unanimous stuff. I may have to vote against something in a minute here. All right, so now we are going to the fifth item on the agenda, which is Brentwood Commons Building C. And I question whether or not they are prepared in here. So what we might want to do, I guess we can't go to Fontana either. Hmm. Uh, Chairman, I've called both, uh, both cases. Brentwood Commons and Fontanelle let know that they're we're running ahead of schedule. Um, I think Kimberly Horn should be here first. They they said they should be here ten minutes. Ten Thank minutes you. Yeah. So we'll take a short recess. Stay close. As soon as they get here, we'll start back up. You can have to see if you sing or sing and dance. You want me to dance? dance. <laughs> <laughs> As long, yeah, as long as I'm not doing it, I ain't.
You're holding us up, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Uh, after a short recess, we're ready to uh, continue, uh, and we're going to hear ready for the uh, fifth applicant. If the applicant wants to come up, and uh, Miss Penny will read you the short uh, opening statement. The opening statement to the to applicant. If you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of centuria with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Thank you. With that, we'll turn it over to the staff for a short summary of the request. Yes, this is case number 2018-0006. Uh, project name is Brentwood Commons, Building C, located at 120 Brentwood Commons Way. The map number is 160, parcel 209. Inspector is Kenneth Trantner, and it's located at Council District 4. The applicant's request is to allow the following. Stream buffer disturbance for extension of existing culvert and for proposed right turn lane on Old Hickory Boulevard. Stream buffer disturbance for outlet protection for outfall of proposed detention pond and stream buffer disturbance for restoration of entire buffer. The appellant is Gateway Poplar and Company. The representative is Ryan McMaster with Kimberly Horn. There are no stormwater staff comments, no comments from codes, planning, and Greenways defers to the Stormwater Management Committee. Thank you. And uh, now we'll turn the floor over to the applicant. I'm Ryan McMaster with Kimberly Horn. describe the request sure our request today is for a buffer disturbance uh, mainly uh, originated from the traffic impact study for the development that required a westbound right-hand turn lane on Old Hickory Boulevard uh, due to that right-hand turn lane we had to adjust and amend some existing stormwater infrastructure that extended a pipe that goes underneath uh, Old Hickory Boulevard, approximately 10 to 15 feet. So as such, we had some buffer disturbance of that pipe extension and head wall and, and stabilization. In addition to that, we have a uh, stormwater detention pond as part of the project. And we have approximately four to five feet of disturbance of the buffer as a result of that outlet protection of the detention pond. And today, the buffer of that existing stream running through the property is being uh, mowed and maintained as part of an office park. So as part of the mitigation of the disturbance that we proposed, we're coming back and, and um, I guess, improving that buffer uh, with some native vegetation, some understory trees, and putting up buffer signage. Um, as a part of the mitigation for the disturbance that were requested. Thank you. Is anyone here to speak in opposition to or in favor of the request? Seeing none, we'll open it up to the committee for questions or comments. Staff comments about the mitigation. Uh, are y'all happy with it? What does no comment mean? <laughs> we usually only comment when we're unhappy oh. about the mitigation. <laughs> <laughs> so that's tacit consent, sounds like to me. Okay. Correct. 
Uh, start using emojis. <laughs> Smiley face. <laughs> yeah, we got, we got the big timer emoji up there. We might as well go all the way. Okay. So to make sure I understand, you're developing a new office project and as part of that they're making you widen or put a new turning lane on Old Hickory. That's correct. That in order to do that turning lane you got to do some development in the buffer. That's correct. And also as part of that project your um, detention structure does go, does intrude into the buffer four or five feet. The outlet protection does. The outlet protection. Beyond the structure. Yes. Okay. And um, that, those are the only intrusions into the buffer. Those are the only reasons you're here. But as part of the quest, you're also asking for the continuous mowing? No. no. We're, we're actually proposing to enhance that buffer and, and leave it undisturbed moving forward. Okay. So you're making an improvement to what they're doing now. That's correct. Mr. Chairman, I got a motion. Let's hear it. All right, based on your articulate questioning and the tacit approval of staff, I move we approve the presentation, the proposal as presented. I second that motion. Got a motion and a second, so the motion's on the table. I open the floor for discussion on the motion. No. Seeing none, let's put the motion to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that is um, the end of the items on the agenda for hearing requests, and we're moving to um, items of business. The first item of business is the notice of noncompliance to Fontenelle. Um, is everyone here for that matter, Mr. White? They are not. My client's here. The engineer's on the way. We'll be here in just a few minutes. Uh, so if you give us just the shortest break, we'll be ready. Wonderful. Okay, so let's take another short recess. And uh, if you could let us know when they're here. I'll do that. We'll start up. Thank you. Fontenelle, and uh, I think the first thing we'll do, I guess just in case there is some decision, let's go ahead and read uh, the statement, the opening statement again, uh, then we'll turn to staff for just a quick explanation of what we're hearing, um, and then we'll turn it over to the applicant. So let's start with the opening statement. Our opening statement to the applicant. If you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of centuria with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Thank you. Now we'll turn it over to the staff for a uh, summary of um, why we're here and what we're hearing. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm gonna start off, um, maybe a brief explanation as we get started here, because normally you get to hear Mr. Mishu or one of his cohorts uh, begin. Um, and normally the way we handle these cases and the way they come before you, like many of the ones earlier today, is it relates to getting plans approved. So they're at the sort of before the project moves forward state uh, point in time. And that's when the design review or development services staff give you the input and read the information. Uh, this particular case is different in this. This relates to a past variance. Uh, so uh, that's why we're speaking instead of the development services staff, at least on this one. Um, and I can provide any amount of detail that you want on this one, but uh, basically what this relates to is a past variance that contained conditions. 
and the testimony and the conditions of the variance stipulated and a variance for use of the buffer. If you remember, there was some allowance of periodic parking in the buffer. Uh, another requirement of that variance was that the site had to put together a stormwater management plan that outlined what they could do, what they could do where. And over the last several years, we have worked with them routinely on that plan. We've done inspections, we've worked with them. Uh, uh, in various ways uh, as they have put people over the site that have kept an eye on that over time. Uh, during our latest inspection, um, and Rebecca, you may have to help me on the exact date, but I believe it was sometime in October, late October. We went out to the site to do one of these inspections. My understanding is we had arranged uh, with, with their staff to conduct this inspection, at which time we found that they were having an event. It was referred to, I think it was a glow event. It was a Halloween associated event where they had activities within the buffer. Uh, you can see here in the write-up that's included in your packet. Uh, they, they were parking. Uh, they also had some food trucks, some tents, some portable restrooms, and some different things in the buffer. This. Um, activity was also being conducted several straight days. And in evaluating this information, uh, we felt it was appropriate for the site to come back before the committee and to evaluate the frequency at which they are using that area and reconcile that with the previous variance that they got. Uh, there is another permutation on this that relates to an adjacent property that it's possible they may want to utilize as well. And I think the legal parties have been, or the legal representatives have been discussing this a bit. Uh, there's some question as to whether or not the buffer actually is uh, has been established on those parcels because all that was constructed were greenways at the time that particular project, and that's a project separate to what we're talking about today. Um, but they're still continuing to have the legal discussions on that, on whether that buffer is officially in effect. Um, they're also uh, relating to this case, there were some planning uh, uh, there was some planning language that was associated with this, and I know the committee and, and the site has tried to reconcile that with the uh, approve, approvals of this committee. Uh, you can read here where it talks about the SP language for Fontenelle. We tried to include that to give you uh, some additional information relating to that. It gets a little bit complicated regarding is something a, a seasonal performance entertainment venue or a community-related event. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the background on that, but that probably is, is going to necessitate some additional discussions between the legal representatives. I think overall our main goal today was just to help reconcile for the facility and staff what is the appropriate uh, conditions for that variance and if the site has, and over time I think the uses of that site has changed so that they now, the operational activities are different and just try to look at reconciling that for both the site's benefit and for the benefit of staff as we look to enforce those conditions over time at the site. If you turn over to the second page, Mr. Chairman, you had asked that we put together a summary of the various enforcements on Fontenelle over time, which we've done. Um, again, uh, some of these related to the various grading permit projects that over time have occurred on that site. Um, of course, some of the things resulted in NOVs if they violated the grading permit or they uh, violated Metro Code. This was more so relating to the condition of the variance, which is why it's coming back to you. This particular matter is coming back to you in this means. Um, and I think it's a listing of six there. So with that, I'd be willing, and myself or Rebecca, who actually conducted and conducts those inspections, would be willing to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Normally we would hand it over to um, the applicant next, but actually I'd like to turn to Metro Legal. <laughs> Didn't realize we got a new pe person sitting there. She snuck over there. On Good morning. Sir. Good morning. Um, and some of this may be a difficult question. You should come in and walk in. It. What exactly are we being asked to do with respect to a notice of non-compliance? Non to 
I, I don't, I think someone else can answer that one. Part of the issue with the GLOW event was at the time they had envisioned holding similar events that also would have them in that buffer area for specific points in time that would again be determined to be in violation of the past conditions. So I think uh, a couple of things. One, giving them the opportunity to come back before you to ask if they want to modify that particular variance condition. I think that would be the primary element today. Does, does this have something to do with frequency of using the area? Mm -hmm. Is that, I mean, that's sort of what I understood reading through. So frequency so, and then I, I think when the case was presented to you originally, uh, it was focused mainly on the parking of cars. Mm -hmm. And the, some of the events have more than cars in some of these areas, food trucks, different booths, uh, which, which seem to be different from what was initially proposed. And the, these are within so, the, uh, the buffer zone? So I, I think that's, so I mean, correct. as my understanding, maybe a lot of it had to do with frequency of the events. I didn't know if there was anything that we, need, we would need to change within the, our variance as far as uh, types of vehicles or other uses. Are you saying that that's, is that what we're? I, I would suggest it perhaps would be beneficial to the site okay. if that was something they envisioned to contemplate that. Mm -hmm. And if the site is, if, if the site doesn't, think that they need any modification to the variance condition, then they certainly wouldn't need to be, uh, they wouldn't need to pursue anything like that. But I know uh, they had a Christmas event planned uh, after that, and there was some question as to whether or not that would have been compliant as well. We tried to work with the site, and they, they installed controls, uh, and I don't think the event ran the full duration that it was going to. But um, I think it's, it's really, it boils down to if it, if the current variance language meets what they need, mm -hmm. then it would just, I, th I think it would be okay as is. But our understanding was in meeting with them after the event that they did want to pursue some additional consideration of that variance language. But, but in this uh, noncompliance or whatever we're calling this, there's not been any disturbance of buffers or anything um, that that's identifiable that uh, has been damaged since, or? Since that, that time? No, at that time. At, 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 yeah. Currently, is there anything that we're considering that there's been any kind of buffer damage or uh, construction or disturbance other than holding events within these particular areas? Uh, Rebecca, would you want to comment on that? Um, so, as we mentioned, the, the original stormwater plan had um, only a certain number of times that they could could park in the buffer, and they were exceeding that. The other, mm -hmm. the other thing that's in question right now, and I believe our legal staff is still um, is still thinking about it. Their original stormwater plan only covered the area that I'm circling right now, but the GLOW event utilized the Greenway um, in this area, and the Sparkle event was also utilizing the Greenway, and there were some. Um, some exhibits, some stages, some decorations that were being put in what we were uh, considering buffer. That was, we are considering a, a buffer disturbance, but as I said, the, the lawyers are still trying to, to, to determine if it's a buffer or not. Um, they have built a greenway there, which um, usually for us, because we have our, our staff approvable buffer disturbance for greenway, um, SOP that was it originally a blanket variance through the committee, and um, we have taken that to a resolution to council to allow us to approve buffer disturbances for Greenway. Um, we assume that once a Greenway goes through, that that a buffer applies. But like I said, our that the lawyers are still trying to figure that out. So when they did the. Um, when you say the buffer applies, it's because the question is whether or not there's been a development to establish the buffer. Correct, and, and the Greenway is over the 10,000 square foot. Um, what kicks in our buffer, it's actually, I think it's a half mile Greenway, so we're looking over 30,000 square feet, so that would normally kick in uh, the buffer. Um, so this is the, the plan from what they proposed for the Sparkle event, which shows that there would be things in the areas that we thought would not be disturbed during that. So we asked them to come back and say, just put everything on your plans, ask for everything that you want, and so we will know what we can approve and not approve when it, when it goes on out there. I think I understand. So the, do the frequency of events, uh, that brought up a question, and now they have an opportunity to maybe come back and say, maybe we need to modify our plan based upon X, Y, and Z, and I assume that's what, that's what they're going to introduce. But are we actually, uh, we're just, uh, what are we doing today? Are we taking any kind of action today, or are we just listening? 
Well, I, I've got a question that may help augment that mm -hmm. question, and, and that is, can somebody define what disturbance is? Because th these are all temporary activities in a buffer where a food truck pulls in, where a car pulls into a buffer. Does that mean trees are being cut to do, to do that? Does that mean that the ground has been tore up? Does that mean that oil is leaking out of a vehicle? What, what, what's the definition of disturbance? Here? So in, in their original plan, um, um, and this is the, the, the plan that came in with their stormwater management plan, all these areas, um, the pink is floodway and then the, 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 the beige-ish yellow is, is the floodway buffer, and you can see the, the parking spots in here. So these were areas that they're allowed to mow out there, um, and they're allowed to park, but they were only supposed to be parking at a certain frequency. Um, I think it was four a month, May through October, and twice a month, November through, through April. And then we had other conditions in that plan where they would come in and aerate the areas and reestablish the grass if it was disturbed. So um, as far as the disturbance of the buffer, the buffer already disturbs, it's just putting additional weight in cars on the floodway um, more times a year. More frequent, but this yes. other parcel, um, with, with the question is on the buffer, um, usually when greenways come in, um, we assume that they plan on only maintaining three foot to either side of the greenway mowing and the other areas to grow up. And so when they move in an event, sorry, like, like Sparkle, these you know additional areas stay cleared. And like this right here is, is a stage and seating, so that would also stay cleared. Plus the equipment moving in and out to, to set that up, we would consider that a potential disturbance. So like I said, so everything can be on the plan, what can and can't happen out there in the different areas. Okay, so just, just for my understanding and maybe the, the committee's understanding and maybe the, maybe other applicant, future applicants' understanding, it, it sounds like that normally zone two buffers, which is probably predominantly what we're talking about here. It's all zone one. And, and, and there is some zone, there are zone ones as well. But let's let's take those one at a time. In, in so zone twos, normally we don't park cars. I think she said it's all zone. Yeah, it's, it's all, all in flood, it's floodway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's all zone floodway one. buffer. Okay, so typically in zone ones, we don't even allow mowing, much less parking the cars. Okay, now I understand. But <clears throat> I guess this is my question. You know, I know we may spend a lot of time on this, and two of us have to leave at 11 o'clock. So um, it says the applicant will present a plan, but are we in a position to modify that plan? I mean, is that something that we've advertised that we can do, or are we just listening to discussion right now? And that, and that was getting back to my question originally, and why I think we needed to hear to do this before we start hearing from the applicant. What exactly are we being asked to do under and under and under what authority? Can we modify? That's my question. Can we modify a variance? And especially when there's still a lot of stuff in legal that needs to be decided. Why right. is it? I think that, yeah, I think that's a separate question then. because we're talking about. Two separate parcels, I believe, but and, and I think part of that depends on what the site wants to do. If they are coming back today and saying that the existing variances are okay, then I don't know that there is anything for you to do. Maybe working out this other legal matter. Mm -hmm. If they do see that there are additional things to do, then perhaps today that's something they can state, and then the normal process can can Come back. be initiated okay. to evaluate whatever procedure that or whatever uses that they're wanting to pursue. So this awesome. is almost like a preliminary discussion. Uh, yes. Okay. I because would say if they so. want to ask for a, a, a variance, right, because they've got to come back before us and get an official variance request and go through the procedure. Correct? Right. Because when we encounter something like this, the enforcement protocol is to bring it back to the committee. So in some ways, it, it's on to what the, co the, the applicant would want as far at the time. I guess they could have submitted a specific plan of what they wanted. I think today, and I, don't, I haven't seen everything they've submitted maybe, but it sounds like today would be more of a discussion just to hear how what their plans are reconciled with this and then move forward like a regular case. So under our rules, you, you issue a notice of noncompliance. It comes before the committee. If it relates to a variance or a variance condition. Right. And it's so the applicant can explain mm -hmm. their position. And, and the reason for that is sometimes they need to petition for an additional uh, or a modification to a condition or maybe another component Which they of can variance. express they can express that intent at that point in time, but they'd have yes. to come back for the actual request. Y yes, ever how it, it reconciles with what the procedures, public notice procedures are for the committee. So there's actually no vote that this committee will be taking on what we're about to hear. 
I, I, I can't say that for sure, but it doesn't sound like it would unless they, it would sound like whatever they're going to discuss today would then have to be submitted as an application and then heard in the future after a public notice period. So they're just gonna respond discuss, clarify, and then, and then possibly discuss if they feel like their plan needs to be expanded or modified, what that would right. be. Okay. Almost awesome. like a response to an inquiry today, official response to an inquiry. And, and part of the problem is, not problem, but um, these aren't specific variance conditions. One of the variance conditions was to develop a stormwater plan. And so what we're, what we're working on is the stormwater water plan here, which isn't a specific item. But like I said, the, we did not feel we could approve um, additional volume of parking. So that is what we are asking you guys to, to think about is how many events will you, how many times a year will you allow them to park in these areas? So it almost be an interpretive type questions too. Okay. Yeah, and, and you know, the, the point of my clarification earlier was that we've already granted a pretty unusual variance here and now there's non-compliance with that very unusual variance. With that, let's turn the floor over to the applicant, or not applicant, uh, Property owner, responder, <laughs> whatever, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of respondent. I think I guess this is a respondent, I guess. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, my name is Tom White. I'm an attorney with Toon Entrican and White, 315 Dedrick Street. I think Michael Hunt nailed it. This is to be a conversation today. Uh, and it, the key issue, as Mr. Galba said, what are we here? What's the authority? Basically, it's a conversation. Uh, and as Michael has said, the question is, do we need any further relief? We may not. But the point was to have a discussion here to make sure that the group was aware that we're sensitive to the issue, we want to address it. Uh, there's clearly no vote to be taken today, it's a conversation. So with that said, and realizing that, as I just heard, two of the members need to leave at 11, I'd like John Haas just to address exactly what our position is and make the commitment to you that we're gonna to continue to work with the staff, as I think you've heard Michael Sant say we've done very frequently, thank you. Hello, my name is uh, John Haas. I'm a principal with Edge Planning, Landscape Architecture, and Urban Design. We've been uh, the land planning entitlement consultants for Fontenelle since 2008. This original rezoning for the SP came through in 2009. A condition of the SP, if, you, if you're familiar with the site, there's an amphitheater there. Um, it required you know, 3,000 parking spaces, roughly, uh, on a sellout. Um, we had a condition of the SP that we would come and request a variance to be permitted to park within the floodway. We requested that variance per protocol, per the understanding. That was granted, I believe, in November of 2010. And we're not asking to modify that variance. Uh, what Rebecca just said, I completely agree with, that the variance did not specify how often. It specified how many cars and where those cars could park. It did not specify how often or what type of events you could have in there. We had two types of events in the SP. One called the seasonal performance venue, which was a ticketed concert, if you will, where they might sell three to 5,000 seats. The other was a community-related event, which again, this was eight years ago. The owners anticipated having community fairs, car shows, things of that nature that they would hold within the floodway. We were permitted to have those without any limitation in the SP. The teeth of the variance comes in the form of this stormwater management plan, which we agreed with, and as, as Mr. Hunt said, we've worked with constantly over the last eight years on making amendments and changes. This latest notice of noncompliance, our understanding was in relationship to the number of events, and if you'll allow me to just uh, tell you what the current stormwater management plan says in terms of frequency, for these community-related events, it was addressed in this way in the original stormwater management plan in 2010. Use of special events slash overflow parking May through October, anticipated average use for a month. November through April, anticipated average use twice a month. So we're talking about trying to define anticipated from 2010 to how often they're using it now. And we said, look, we agree, let's, let's nail this down a little bit. So I wanna tell you what our response was, and we thought we had worked through with staff that we were going to amend the stormwater management plan and try to settle these issues. 
So what we did is we added almost two more pages, a whole nother section to the stormwater management plan and said, we're going to define these events, these community related events like uh, the glow, like uh, they've had a baseball game there. They have uh, Thursday night uh, back porch uh, picnics in the floodway. Community related events as defined by the SP. We're going to establish three tiers of events and we're going to require the owner is going to agree to in, in at least two weeks in advance to fill out a form which if, if you've got the draft of this there's a form that says if it's a tier one that might be this back porch picnic nothing's really going to happen we're going to let you know about it and let you know that people will be milling about in the floodway we might bring a barbecue truck in there and do barbecue they will follow the stormwater management plan, which says complete inspections and repairs within 24 hours of anything, any damage or disturbance that is done to the floodway or the floodway buffer. Then there's a tier two, which says we might be parking in there. And if we're gonna park in there, we're gonna follow protocol and follow this stormwater management plan in terms of how we handle it. And then there was a tier three, which is essentially something like a glow that might happen for two or three days straight. And in those cases, we would introduce BMP measures. So if there is a food truck there, we're gonna do different things. We're gonna put up erosion control fence. We're gonna do some other things. And all of those would be agreed upon through this process with this form that we've created with staff that the owner would fill out, submit to staff, staff would comment. And even though the event in, uh, I kind of feel like a, a magical person today because between GLOW and then the event at Christmas that didn't happen that was referred to earlier was called Sparkle. We went through this process with staff on Sparkle uh, identifying BMPs, what measures would be taken and had agreed to if that event happened, here's what we were going to do. And we had uh, different erosion control measures and things like that in place. So we anticipate that that's the way this, these events would happen in the future. And, and based on the NON, um, we worked through staff with that on amending this stormwater management plan, which again, I think is really where the teeth is and thought we were, that staff was in agreement with it. Just a couple of other things. In this stormwater management plan, we, we cleared up some things because over the years, we actually reduced the number of parking spaces that are permitted in the floodway by 200 spaces with this change. Um, we also, and because there are uh, scheduled uh, inspections, if you were, where staff comes out and reviews with Mr. Kitzmiller, who's in charge of maintenance, and walks the site and inspects it and essentially looks for violations. Um, we've worked with staff through that. We've agreed to now do that twice a year as opposed to once a year. So we've, we've added another layer of inspections as part of this stormwater management plan. And then lastly, I think there's, there's a little bit of gray area here because this stormwater management plan was done in 2010. 2010, you know, the, the dreams were flying high. There are gonna be 18 concerts out there. They're all gonna be sellouts. And we're gonna have 4,000, 3,000 people out there. And there's gonna be 1,800 cars parked in this floodway 18 times a year. Last year, there were six concerts, six ticketed concerts, and I'm not sure any of them were sellouts. Uh, two. two. Two of them were sellouts. So the idea with the GLOW, one of the things that we've done as we've worked through this is the GLOW was an event that did happen in the floodway. It was a community-related event, which we believe we were permitted to do. We were parking within the floodway, which we believed we were permitted to do, and steps we were taking then, our owners have learned a lot. They moved the cars from night to night as to where they were parking in the floodway. They immediately the next day made any repairs, roped those areas off if they needed to be seated and strawed per the stormwater management plan, and didn't park cars there again. So. They've been trying to do the right things. I think what happened is the inspection came out when this event was there, uh, this, this notice of violation, and, and they were made aware that they were planning on doing another one. That one got canceled. But we agreed uh, absolutely immediately to come in and let's adjust this stormwater management plan to address this. But we don't believe we have to, or we need to request any changes to the existing variances.
we got stuff we got to do. Um, thank you. Uh, then we're going to see if anyone's here to speak either uh, uh, in favor of uh, or in opposition to uh, or comment on, I guess is more appropriate, uh, the notice of noncompliance. Is, is, is anyone here to comment on the notice of noncompliance? Seeing none, I think we need to state in the record um, that we received a number of emails um, commenting on the notice of compliance, um, six in fact, uh, and then there was another sent um, this morning um, that didn't make it in our packet, uh, but this gentleman uh, did have an email that is included in our packet, Mr. George Ewing. Um, looks like he updated all of us with some pictures, um, but I wanted to uh, state that into the record. Um, also, I don't believe we're taking any votes today, uh, but Mr. Dale, did you see it? You saw this, and you've considered what's in these emails. I'm not a developer. No, yeah, I, no, I, yeah, I, I just want to make that no, record. I, I saw that. Saw if I had any reason to recuse myself, I would. One. But we're not voting on anything. I, so. I, I, so I agree with it. Yeah, both statements. Right. Okay, I just wanted to make that available. To That's you. one of the reasons I asked that uh, on the front end. Quite honestly, uh, I think this is more of a clarification than anything else. And maybe we, you know, maybe have some questions that we need to ask based upon how they're doing things. Maybe. All right, so sounds good. I just want to get the, uh, the public comments into the record, uh, and now we'll turn it over to the committee uh, uh, for comments or uh, questions. Okay, I've got a proposal. It may require a vote, may not. Um, as I understand it, this has a preliminary nature to it, and typically we do form motions on preliminary positions of the committee. So I'm going to throw this out as a comment and then see if there's interest in making this a formal motion. I think it'll help. So um, uh, you all have donated quite a bit of space for greenways out there for public purposes. You're working with a piece of property that is in the zone one buffer, the hardest place to, to have events and activities, but you've been given a variance to do that. And all of the details appear to be in flux. They, they, there needs to be more conversation with staff. You're willing to work with staff. Okay. So what I'm going to propose is, and this is what I heard, is that you all continue to work with staff, that you, that you define what frequency of events should be, that you define what the definition of event should be, that you define the location of the buffers per future greenways, per current greenways, I mean, that ambiguity alone would drive an enforcement person and a manager of a property who's juggling everything but stormwater, but has to juggle stormwater, drive them crazy. It's a, it's a very challenging thing to have to deal with that. And so without definitions, you, you don't really know what to do, do you? And then fourth, uh, you have to have BMP measures for these different types of events because you're having a food truck in a zone one buffer next to a creek and you don't want water quality being harmed by that short-term temporary activity. And so uh, these are the four things that I heard. And, and, and I think if, if we encourage you all and staff to come up with simple, clear, and enforceable language, I think this will get a lot better. And if all of that could be amended in the stormwater management plan, simple, clear, and enforceable, I think it will cut through all of the difficulty that you all are having to deal with and that our enforcement staff are having to deal with. Is that fair? Is that a fair comment? I would respond and say we think that's a fair comment. That's basically what we've asked for. Staff's been cooperative. We're trying to have a conversation about it. You've now given basically the mantle of authority from that from your group, and that's exactly what we'll do. I think we're just directing staff. I mean, I'm not sure it even requires a motion. I don't know. But I mean, that makes sense that, that y'all work with staff. I have a couple of questions, though. <laughs> I'm just curious, again. Um, what kind of signage is out there on the buffers and... 
We have the required, you know, every couple hundred feet, I believe. But does it say, is it a buffer sign or is yeah, it a floodway a sign? Or? Well, there, so earlier, I think Rebecca may have referred to that graphic, that one with the pink and the yellow on it. I don't know if you can pull it back up, but just, just to be clear, that pink is not the floodway. That's the 100 foot from top of bank, no touch zone that we've agreed to. Yeah, that's no, what I was wondering. Is there any signage along that? Along that? Not along that 100 feet. There is uh -huh. not. But, what, but what's happened is the Greenway has essentially defined that now when they built the Greenway. Mm -hmm. The yellow is the, so everything between the yellow and the pink is the floodway, is the zone one. Um, and so we have signs essentially on the edge of those yellow areas that identify that this is the floodway, you know, the, the typical floodway stream buffer signs. Yeah, I mean, um, I just think that maybe that's something you can work with staff on. To, to me, it's strange that you would have a floodway buffer sign there, but yet, but yet you're utilizing that whole area. It seems to me it would make more sense to delineate the darker pink area so people would know not to encroach upon that because right now, I don't think they would know that. So. You well, know, you, you might see the, the actual paved greenway. You could think, hey, man, we can go all the way up to that. So it, to me, it may be more beneficial to put signage where you're not supposed to be versus putting signage where you technically can be. It's confusing. And yeah. So I don't know if that's well, part it, of the issue. It's yeah, it's point. very confusing. And yeah. one of the things on the stormwater management plan is for these tiered events, at certain tiered events, then fencing will actually go up there. If, if we anticipate, most days there might be 10 people out there milling sure. about. Right. And so um, we have done some educational signage as well, um, particularly over by the amphitheater. And there is, uh, you know, that, that's an unnamed tributary over there. There's, there are some permanent fence. So when you have there. a major event, then you can put up some, you put up temporary fencing? Is that what you normally yes. would do? Yes. So, okay. Well, that was my question. And that may, that may take care of it, but uh, I think you ought to talk to staff about that. Um, I think that would be a good thing. So. A couple questions. A couple questions. Um, it says in the variance language, it says you did not notify staff of the event as required by provision number three. Is that? Yeah, that was part of the stormwater management plan that was already in place and staff was not notified of this event. Okay, so there was a failure. On, there was on a the failure on the ownership part, and, and one of the things we've tried to do to address that is, look, you know, own, you know, Bob Ekman here is part of the ownership group. Here is a form now. You know, uh, we're consultants. We're that form that I saw in here, that's the exactly. propo that's a proposed form. You need to know two weeks ahead, of, ahead. this needs to be filled out and emailed to staff. And that was, that was the, the last page of that official response? Yes. Okay. And then it says uh, a similar event called Sparkle was scheduled. I thought I heard that that wasn't even held. It was or? canceled. Yes. Uh, okay. This is uh, Bob Ekman. Um, I believe it went for three days, and and then we canceled the rest. Oh, so it's it was a, it was going to be a longer event. You tried it for three days, it didn't work very well. And you I think it was it. supposed to be 17 or 18 plus days in December, and uh, uh, after the first three days, we canceled it. Okay. With the uh, it was a third party event. It wasn't our own. And that's the event that we failed to notify the of the plans. Is that the same event, or is that a different one? That 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 was a different one. They were notified of that. The Glow event, which was another third party set up in October, was was when all this failure failure happened. And then we said, oh well, if we're not allowed to do this, you know, we need to work through this. And we're planning on having one in December. So we notified them of the one in December. We went through this process with with this new stormwater management plan and kind of trial ran it. Um, with BMPs and so on. And there's some question still, uh, uh, I guess it's a legal interpretation as to whether or not your plan needs to incorporate the south parcel. Is that, is that what I'm reading here? My, my comment is yes, I've had those conversations with Metro Legal and our position is that we would address the four things that Mr. Galbraith raised and perhaps the signage thing that Mr. Dale raised and come back and deal with the staff on that. It's my opinion that there's no authority to include a 47 acre tract that's not part of it at the present time. But again, it's, it's an unusual situation where the language is not the most lucid, you know, where we got no definition of frequencies uh, and yet we're far lesser than what was originally anticipated. So I think it's a matter 
matter of the correct dialogue, and to the client's credit, when they found out Glow was not appropriately notified, they immediately notified about the next event, uh, and we intend to do that. That's part of the commitment, but I want to be clear that I think it's a matter of clarifying what's already there. We're not asking for any significant changes, uh, but I think the four points that Mr. Galbraith raised and then what <coughs> Mr. Dale raised about the science are things we need to address, and we're making the commitment to you to do that, whether you mandate it by a vote or not, we're yeah. making that commitment, period. I think it's just beneficial for everybody. In other words, God is saying, work it out. So the discussion as far as the South Parcel is still ongoing with, with Metro Legal? It is, and it may basically go away based upon the resolution on these four to five issues. Uh, as I said, I, I don't know, and someone already asked, what's the authority for engrafting the 47? I don't think there's any authority to do that, and it may be a non-event if we address these others, and I think it will be. Okay, thank you. To, to staff, is there anything that's gone on non-compliance-wise that would affect uh, a, a, the quantity or, or quality well, a quality is obviously an issue. What about quantity of flooding? Is there anything here that would, any non-compliance issues that would affect flooding at all in this area? Well, I could tell you that this is, uh, the whole floodway in the buffers is very enormous in this area. Uh, they have had some projects before that, um, I think it was the Southern Living Home that, w that designed a plan that didn't have any fill in the flood plan. Yeah, I remember that one. As far as what we're talking about today, though, the non-compliance with the storm plan, is there anything there that ha could have any effect on flooding? Um, uh, you for, for, for us, um, as you can see, that the property has, has a really wide floodway right. and, and a um, also associated floodplain. And um, by not allowing the, that area to, to revegetate naturally as, as we do for many of these and, and allowing parking in that area, the, the floodplain gets compacted. The more cars you have on it, the more compacted it gets, so the less it, it has its spongy function as, as a floodplain. So basically what we're looking for direction on is the number of times they can park cars there a year just so we can okay. we could figure it out. Because the original one, it looked like we were looking at a max of 36 events with the the four a month and the twice a month, and then we had an aeration schedule, but of course sometimes a year are wetter, you start getting compaction in areas, you start getting people driving on them at certain times, and, and you lose that floodplain capacity. Okay. So the argument is that not volume, but because of continued use, it's not as permeable as it would have been had it not been used at all. Okay, I just want to, because most of the comments we're getting from the public have to do with flooding. And I just want to make sure that what we're talking about here. Um, another thing that the comments had is they're asking us to revoke the variances. I just want to repeat that that's not in front of us today. I, I would just add one thing relating to the flooding, and I know we've worked with them, and I, I'm assuming it's part of the plan, but there would be some potential for things when staged in the flood way if there was flash flooding. Sure. Could get washed down. I think that's something you, you look at in your plan? Yeah, and, and, and you know, to, to that point on the Sparkle, we had an emergency removal plan. It, that was all included in this tier three form or whatever that we had staff in place to, if there was the threat of a flooding event, those displays could be moved very quickly out of the floodway. Um, so the, absolutely, I think that's, I think that's actually a uh, included in the form for these tier events. Is what is the plan if there is an uh, event? Okay. Did you have another comment, Gal? Yeah, just, just a real quick one as maybe a guidance to staff. It is partly just to kind of make known the conversation Mr. Dale and I were having, but um, off the mic. But um, the, I, you know, this is this is something that's pretty unusual for us to grant uh, of recent practice going forward. Um, so it's, it's really incumbent upon you all to try to make this work in very unique, effective ways. And one of the options might be to, to go beyond the call of duty in that narrow pink zone with, in, with revegetation, with uh, some restoration practices that can augment the frequency of parking outside of that area, which is still zone one, um, you know, and, I, and I'll just make, I'll make this one caveat comment. You know, I grew up on a farm where we would deep till soil to help plant roots pierce the soil better and 
go deeper and help the top of the plant grow better. I just I just don't know how you mitigate compaction of cars and trucks and food trucks and semis that are setting up stages, you know. So you, you need to go you need to go beyond the, the call of duty in this narrow zone because you know, this is not something we would normally approve at this time. So. And, and we completely understand that. And, and just uh, we are aerating twice a year per the management plan. So we're doing that in the spring and fall. Um, we are moving the cars. Um, and so even though these areas that are identified kind of show that's the maxed out, it, it's hardly ever maxed out. Like so we had two sellouts last year. And we have done some stream bank restoration with uh, the... Tennessee Environmental. Yeah, Tennessee Environmental Council came out and did some stream bank restoration. We've also, you know, you, you see the list of variances and some rehearings at times we've done mitigation. Um, so we've done some of that, uh, absolutely, and, and we continue to work with staff when those come up. But but I, I agree with you, and we understand. If it's not spongy restoration, as was said with a Y, it's, 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 it's stabilization, it's something else, and, and we're losing a lot by having given you this variance. So. Thank you. Uh, just to close this out, I'm going to state the board's position, and then I'm going to allow each of the committee to correct that to the extent I'm not expressing uh, our, our thoughts here. Uh, our understanding is that we're not being asked to revoke any variances. I'm not aware of any authority that we can do that. Uh, my understanding or our understanding is that we're listening uh, to uh, the uh, the respondent to a notice of noncompliance. Uh, we hear that they're not requesting or will not be requesting any changes to the existing variances uh, that uh, Mr. Galvin correctly points out were uh, granted long before any of us were here and very inconsistent with what we've done during our time here, um, but that you are continuing to work uh, with Metro Legal uh, with respect to the separate parcel and stormwater to uh, develop a plan, a stormwater plan, management plan uh, that uh, is more tailored to what's actually going on today uh, and provides more interaction uh, with the, uh, the, like the, the, ex the example you used of the paper notice, the formal notice. Uh, if anyone disagrees with that statement, I'd like to... Okay, it's not seeing any. I think that's that's great. Uh, and unless you've got another comment, we appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You very much. Thank you. Um, with that, we go to the next matter of business, which is um, we will not be meeting in this room next time. <laughs> As long as we don't heckle voters and say vote this way, vote that way, right. and, don't, and we would not be able to wear any 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 jewelry either because they get in trouble for that. So, move to adjourn. Okay, your second. Second. All right, we've got a motion on the floor to adjourn that for today. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. Unanimous adjournment. <laughs>